We are going to make some track for our 3D printed railroad. We're going to start by creating a sketch and drawing the profile of the rail. This profile is very simple, but will work for end scale. Now we'll add some dimensions. Now we've got one half of the rail drawn. We're going to use the symmetry tool to draw the other half. And there we go. We've got our entire rail drawn. Now that we have a rail profile, we need to make one more sketch. This sketch is going to contain the gauge lines for the track. And that's simply the inside edge of each rail where the gauge would be measured. We'll use that to align the profiles. We'll add our gauge dimension. And I'm going to add a length to these. I'm going to make them 210 millimeters because that's about how wide I can print on my printer. Now that we have those, we have to move into creating the solids. So we create a body. We'll copy both of these sketches, paste them, move them into the body, and then I'm going to hide these two so we don't inadvertently select them and kind of screw stuff up. Okay, now we want to take our profile sketch and we want to attach it to one of the rails. So we've done that. Now we need to go in and move it to the right point. So we're going to select everything, select everything, deselect the inside point, reselect it so that's where we'll move from. We will select our move function, move it down here. Now one issue I ran into is it seems whenever you do this, it over constrains it, but I found that if I just deactivate this constraint, it's okay. Whenever you do that, you have to make sure that nothing has got knocked out of kilter, but we're fine here. So now that we have it located where we want it, we're going to use the pipe function, go in and select our edge, and we've got one rail. Now we just repeat that for the other one. Add a new body, paste our two sketches, move them into the body, attach our sketch to the line, go in and move it. Now we have to select the other corner, pick move, drop it down here, deactivate our constraint, Use our pipe tool, select our gauge line, and we are done. There we go. We've got our two rails. Now I'm going to save them, export them, and we're going to take them to Blender to add the ties, tie plates, and spikes. So we'll see you there. Okay, we've imported the STL of the rails. Right, now we're going to add a plane. And we're going to size it to the width of the tie. And we're going to size it to the length of it. No, we're not. We're going to only do it one way. So we're done. Now we need to scale it to get the length. Oh, we want to tie. <laughs> Before we go zooming it all over the screen, let's figure out the dimension. It's 16.2. S, Y. 16.2. That looks a little wide. Oh, that's why. Because I need to divide by the size of what's there. So it needs to be 11 times as long. There we go. That looks better. So let's, let's leave it on center and let's move this that yeah, looks pretty close okay so there we have it now it's at the top of the rails so we are going to first extrude it in the z direction by 1.11 1 1. oh negative 1.11 1 1. There we go. We will add 
high plate. We're not in item. There we go. Plane. Move that up here. Um, it's the same width. Could make it scale down a little bit. That looks pretty good. Scale it up. That looks pretty good. Now we'll extrude that. There we go. Now we'll add our spikes. Five millimeter diameters to 0.25 radius. Step. Um, one millimeter is probably more than enough. We're there. It is. Okay, so we'll move it into place. And we'll hit Shift D and duplicate it. Duplicate it. Put it there. Grab all these. D. Move them down here. Get them a little better centered. There we go. So now, that here. We'll grab the whole thing and move it down to the right position below the rails. 1.978. There we go. Okay, so now I'm seeing an issue. Our spike heads aren't high enough and don't protrude above the rail. So we'll have to grab them all and move them up. Put these up a little bit. There we go. So now we've got a tie. Now, I think we want to just add an array. So what is our offset? What do we want our offset to be? One millimeter. We want it to be 3.175. That, that might be a little much. Oh, we'll see. Ding, 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 ding. Look at that, we're laying track. There we go. That looks pretty good. I think we'll go one fewer and we'll adjust the length of the rail. So there we are. Oh wait, let's go back to that. Let's put one more in. And we'll grab these. Back to halfway between, roughly. And there we go. Then we move this back. We have a piece of straight track. So that's all there is to it. Now we'll go through an overview of how the switches were done. It starts with the drawing of the gauge lines because getting all of these pieces of track in the right spot is the most critical thing. So with those lines, we once again drew the profile of the rail and then extruded that along each line. And then some of these, as you can see over on the side, they say cut. So we had to go in and cut away parts of the rail to get the frog and to provide clearance on the switch end. Now this was a little troublesome. If you were making this out of uh, metal rail, you'd sand these a lot thinner than they are, but I still have to leave enough room here 
to print it. And I'm printing it with an FDM printer. So this has to be at least a half mil wide, which is what this web is. So we'll have to sand this down a little bit after it's printed to get it to fit completely into the rail and uh, work properly. But that's an overview of how the switch rails were done. It's essentially the same as a straight rail. It's a little more complicated. The, uh, you know, you've got some clearances and dimensions. I did the critical things like the frog and those dimensions from the NMRA spec. And I used a reference photo to kind of get where the guardrails went. There's a lot of arcane information in the MRA where they go, but uh, this was good enough for me. What we are doing here is putting ties on the number four left hand turnout. So I brought it into Blender for this because these are not dimensionally critical. And I put in a background image as kind of a guide. My turnout doesn't match this. If we turn it off, you can see the frog is in a different point. Essentially what it is is the radius I used is a 12 inch on the curved part and this templates for an eight inch. Eight inch doesn't wind up tangent for the rails. I didn't want to kink in there because I have a feeling I need all the help I can get to get these three different cars to run. So I used the tangent radius, which is just about 12 inches. We're going to start by putting in some ties. We create ties exactly the way we did for the straight piece. Change dimensions, extrude it, go into edit mode, add a tie plate, create a spike, move the tie down into position, move it forward, adjust the tie plate, move the spike, duplicate it, adjust the height, and duplicate the tie plate. For the switch, we can't create an array, so we duplicate the tie and move it along. Once we get to the movable rails, we have to modify it to provide clearance. So the first thing we're gonna do is grab this and move it out to there. We're gonna grab these and delete them. Grab these and move them in so they're inside the rail. Then we grab these, move them out where we want our rail to be. And we do the same thing down here. Get rid of the inner bike head. Uh, where? That looks good. Grab these and move them and turn off this background. There, that's a little, a little easier. I think that's pretty good. If we look at it from the end, this is probably good enough. You can see that these the inner rails that we want to move are not touching the tie, so they should remain free. Um, whether we'll have to print them with supports or not is TBD. Okay, now we can move this one over to here. And it's pretty good here, but we need to lengthen this end. All right, and then duplicate it, move it over here. Now we're gonna take one of these and move it over here. This is the switch eye. I don't know what this is called. So this one we only want be grabbing the inner rail. So we'll move that to there. Again, we'll delete the inner bike head. Down here, do the same thing. Up there. Delete that spike. Move this then to here. So now, I guess if we look from the end, we can see that oh, that the outer rail isn't attached to the movable tie. Oh, forgot one last thing. We need to lengthen it. And there we go. So that's the beginning. We're just going to repeat this out. We're going to take this tie, 
duplicate it, move it along here, um, expanding it out, to keep holding those fixed rails. We're going to take this one, duplicate it. Um, actually, that's going to stay there. These are just going to be floating until we get out to somewhere about here. And then we'll attach all the rails across all the way out to the end. And uh, I think I'm just going to jump ahead and we can show you the final result. Here is the final result. As you can see, all the ties are in, all the tie plates are in, our movable rails are tied down here at the switch tie, and not again up until here, and it's all locked in. I also made a Y switch. This is actually probably the most common one that's gonna be on the layout. And we made a piece of curved track. I don't know how well this one's gonna work, but this is how it works. It's, there's an array just like the last one, but it's attached to this line and deforms with it. So we can grab the points of the line, move them around and curve the track however we want. If you put a lot of curvature in it, it gets pretty distorted. But the curves we're gonna have, it should be okay. Now we're gonna print them out and see how they work. Now it's time to peel these off. I ran this under some cold water. Oh, it's still hot. Oh, that took them off beautifully. So that's the new go-to for me. The moment of truth. The gap between the rail and ties worked out perfectly. It was enough support to successfully print and it just took a light cut of the knife to separate the rails from the ties. So one last thing we'll have to do to modify this is sand down the switch rails, the points, because there was a limit to how fine they can be molded. They can't make less than a half millimeter line with the FDM printer. So these, the web and the rail is a half mil thick, which is a little bit too thick to get the rail really tucked in there. So I'm gonna have to sand them down a little bit manually. So it is looking pretty good. I'll just show you this one. Now let's take a detailed look at the switches and watch some cars run over them. They work pretty good for a first attempt, although I think we need a little more clearance in the frogs. Here's another video on the 3D printed railroad and one more you may be interested in. Thanks for watching.